In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at concavity and points of inflection. This is going to be part one of two because I'm going to focus on definitions and some tests and what's this going to look like pictorially. And in video two, we'll actually work out an example where we are doing it algebraically and we're finding the concavity and any points of inflection that might be there. All right, so we're going to start here with the definition of concavity. All right, we're going to let F be differentiable on an open interval. The graph is of f is concave up on the interval if f prime is increasing and concave down on the interval if f prime is decreasing on the interval. All right, so um, wordy definition, all written out in words, but there is something definitely to memorize out of this. The graph of f, all right, so f is concave up if f prime is increasing. All right, that's going to be something that you're going to want to remember later when you get into curve sketching. Okay, it becomes very, very important. All right, and then it says, and f is concave down on the interval if f prime is decreasing. All right, so definitely two very important things in that paragraph definition that you would need to memorize that really doesn't stand out when you first read it. You don't necessarily think of, oh, hey, I better pull something out of that definition to remember. Okay, um, then for the second one is actually the test that we're going to use for finding concavity. We're going to let f be a function whose second derivative exists on the open interval. So as long as we can calculate that second derivative, we're in good shape here. If that second derivative is positive or greater than zero, then we know f is going to be concave up. If the second derivative is negative or less than zero, then we're going to know that f is concave down. All right, now this whole concave down, concave up thing, just to give you an idea of about what this is going to look like. All right, let's suppose I've got um, some random polynomial curve, maybe like that. Okay, that's my f of x curve. All right, now what this is, is this is going to tell us what concave up and concave down is. All right, think of this area right in here, all right, being concave down because it's kind of trapping things in a downward motion. So here's your concave down area. And then right in here, okay, the graph has changed directions, doing something different. Right in here, you're going to have concave up. All right, and then the point along the curve where it actually changes from concave down to concave up, that point is called a point of inflection. Okay, so there's our point of inflection. And we can actually um, algebraically, and we'll do that in the second video, we can actually algebraically find that value of specifically where the, the graph shifts from being concave down to concave up. All right, now a little bit more. Um, I do want to make a special note here. Um, I teach out of a Larson textbook, and in that particular textbook, along with some others, all right, um, the, some textbooks require that the tangent line exist at the point of inflection. So they just kind of throw that into that definition of point of inflection. Okay, so I've drawn some pictures here that might help with that. All right, if this is my curve, I've got concave up here, I've got concave down here, all right, but I can clearly dry it draw my tangent line right there, my tangent line exists. Okay, now, uh, we do have to, like, be flexible here because these are hand drawings, so I'm not doing a very good job putting that tangent line on necessarily. All right, maybe I had a curve that looked like this. Right in here is concave down, right in here is concave up. All right, and I can draw a tangent line as it goes around there because it would then ultimately cross and go to the other side. And here again, just another one, another nice little smooth polynomial curve. I got some concave up here, concave down here, and somewhere in there. Hopefully I've drawn that tangent line to look pretty decent. Okay, now the tangent line requirement in that point of um, inflection definition takes care of a couple particular scenarios and I'm going to draw those out right here. All right, let's suppose we've got some point C on our curve somewhere and let's suppose our graph kind of looked like this maybe. All right, with a distinct little cusp thing going on right there. All right, well I've got concave up here, I've got concave down here, all right, but right here I have no tangent line. I can't draw a tangent line there at that cusp, all right, so no tangent line, all right, means no point of inflection, all right, so no tangent line, I'm just going to do TL, all right, so C is not a point of inflection. Okay, from that scenario, C is not a point of inflection because I can't get a tangent line drawn. 
All right, now also we've got other functions that maybe kind of look like rational functions. All right, so maybe we've got horizontal asymptote going here. We have vertical asymptote going here. And we'll say that vertical asymptote there is at C. Okay, now a rational function could hug here, come down, hug down here. Same thing up here, hug this asymptote, and then come and hug this asymptote. All right, so again, another picture of, well, clearly this right here is concave down, and then I'm going to concave up, okay? So then the debate is, okay, well, is C considered a point of inflection? All right, well, when they have the requirement that there must be a tangent line present, then there is no tangent line at C. Obviously, that's a vertical asymptote, all right? C is not defined either. So that's important because C needs to be defined for there to be a point of inflection. But no tangent line, C is not defined, so you uh, C in this scenario is not a point of inflection. Okay, And so that just depends on what textbook you're using and whether or not they throw in that requirement of that tangent line. But in this short video, I just wanted to go over those definitions, give you those rules, make sure you wrote down, you know, second derivative greater than zero, then f is concave up, and second derivative less than zero, then con is f is concave down. All right, and then same thing with that first derivative. When the first derivative is increasing, you got concave up. When that first derivative is decreasing, you've got concave down. So definitely some things you need to take some notes on about this, and then go ahead and watch that second part so that you can see some of these problems worked out algebraically. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. In this video, I'm going to actually work out a problem where we find the concavity and the points of inflection of a curve. This video is part two of two, so you, you might want to go back and make sure you watch part one. In that one, I talk about the definition of continuity. We talk about points of inflection and what causes a point of inflection and that sort of thing. So definitely, if you don't have any background um, on concavity and points of inflection, before you see an example worked out, you might definitely want to go back and watch part one. All right, so the directions here are going to say determine the open intervals on which the graph is concave up or down and determine the points of inflection. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do, since our points of inflection come from our second derivative, we're setting that second derivative equals zero. We need to calculate the first derivative. We need to calculate the second derivative. So right off the bat, we're going to go first derivative f prime is going to be 4x to the third and then minus a 12x squared. All right, then I need the second derivative, so I'm going to do f double prime of x is equal to a 12x squared minus a 24x. All right, and I've got that second derivative. All right, now at this point then, if I set that second derivative equal to zero, I'm going to have possible points of inflection. And I like to really emphasize possible points of inflection because just because I set this second derivative equal to zero and I find some points on the curve, all right, I mean, there could be something else funky going on. So you definitely have to, at that point, you've got possible points of inflection. So let's do that right here and actually put it out. Possible points of inflection. And I just kind of emphasize that to make sure that my students don't just automatically do it set equal to zero and then, oh, yep, that's definitely it. Okay, so um, let's take that second derivative set equal to zero. So 12x squared minus 24x equals zero. All right, let's factor out a 12x. All right, out of here, that's going to leave me with just an x. And 24x, taking that 12x out would just leave me with a 2. So then from here, I'm going to get x equals 0, and from here, I'm going to get x equals a 2. All right, now, since points of inflection are points on the curve, then I ha usually have my students write them as an ordered pair. Okay, so we're going to label these possible points of inflection. All right, and zero. Now, since they are points of inflection are on that original curve, you're going to take zero, plug it back in here to this original curve, and clearly that's going to give us a zero. And then we're going to take that x equals two, and we're going to plug that back into the equation, and you might need a calculator to do that. Um, it turns out to be a negative 16. 
All right, so at this point, these technically really are just my possible points of inflection, all right? And then I'm going to determine my concavity using a number line, and then I'm going to be able, probably from there, to determine specifically, well, are they for sure points of inflection or not? Okay, so at this point, I'm going to draw eh, a relatively nice long number line here. I'm going to put these two possible points of inflection on my number line. I'm going to put zero there and I'm going to put there, two there. I'm going to go ahead and label these intervals <clears throat> on this number line. So negative infinity all the way up to zero. The interval here from zero to two and then the interval from two to infinity. All right, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a look at the second derivative first and I'm going to be determining, well, is it positive or is it negative? And then that's going to tell me then what f of x is doing. So that'll give me my concavity. All right, so if I want to know what my second derivative is doing here, I'm going to pick second derivative. I'm going to pick a number in this interval. And keep in mind, I don't need to know the specific value. I just need to know mm, about. Okay, so obviously these are going to be negative numbers. So if I take, a say, a negative 1. I take negative 1 squared. It's going to give me a positive 12 right there. All right, and then times a negative 1 here with that minus right there it's going to give me some type of positive number. So my second derivative is going to be greater than zero. All right, now in this interval, I don't know, let's pick one because one's easy to work with. If I plug one in here, I get 12. I plug one in here, I get 24. So clearly that would be a negative value or less than zero. My second derivative will be less than zero in this interval. All right, doing it again over here, some positive number. All right, I don't know, three, four, five, whatever you want to do. This will be positive and pretty darn big minus another number that's positive and probably going to be smaller than that. So I'm going to have, again, a positive second derivative. All right, now that tells me then my original function. When my second derivative is positive or greater than zero, my original function is concave up. When my second derivative is less than zero, my original function is concave down. And then... Again, greater than zero is going to be a concave up. All right, now, so now I can look at this concavity. All right, and the question is, at zero and at two, at my two possible points of inflection, well, did my concavity change? Concave up to concave down? So, yep, I've got a point of inflection at zero, zero. And it changed here from concave down to concave up. So I have a point of inflection here. Um, you might also want to definitely make sure and check that at those two points, this function is actually defined. It's a polynomial curve, so it's smooth and continuous everywhere. So yes, it is clearly um, defined right there. So now let's kind of summarize everything that we've done here. So what have we done? Um, we can identify our open intervals for our concavity. So concave up on the intervals from negative infinity to zero and from two to infinity. I can do concave down on the interval from zero to two. And then we've got, let's just go POI points of inflection. All right, are gonna be at, we said zero, zero, because the concavity changes and at 2, negative 16. Okay, so concave up, interval notation with open intervals, concave down, and points of inflection. So everything that the directions asked us to find. All right, now I might note, especially if you're in an AP calculus class because you're in high school, all right, doing this number line in and of itself is not justification for your work. So you can't just leave it here and then expect them to see concave up, concave down, concave up there, and then give you credit for it. If you are asked to identify concave up and concave down, you may use an number line, and you may use that to help you determine those intervals, but you actually do have to then turn around and write it down so that they can see it. So just a little tip there for um, anybody that might be taking that AP Calc exam in their senior year. Um, so um, definitely part two of two on this concavity points inflections. Don't forget to go watch that first video. Hopefully you actually watched that before you watched this. And then one just nice little straightforward example of just being able to locate those two things. Definitely thanks for watching and be sure and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.